Could consuming non-GMO foods be the answer to ending health issues? Well, a new study reveals data collected from over 3,000 people who changed their diets from eating genetically modified food to consuming non-GMOs saw a dramatic turnaround with their health. These individuals reported improvements in areas such as memory, food allergies, obesity, fatigue, and heart problems common issues that may have been caused by their previous diets. Joining me now to continue this conversation is founder of the Institute for Responsible Technology, Jeffrey Smith. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jeffrey. Now, what are the physical health effects of GMO consumption? Well, we had 28 different conditions that people reported improvement from. This was 3,256 people. The number one overwhelming reported improvement was digestive disorders. In fact, 85% of the people who filled out this survey said that their, di their digestion improved. And this is what we predicted based on the fact that I've actually interviewed audiences at 150 lectures, including 20 medical conferences, where the doctors and the audience members describe similar improvements when they or their patients eliminate GMOs and move to a mostly organic diet. This was also the description of what we would predict based on looking at what livestock changes we've seen from veterinarians and farmers when their animals switch to non-GMO. Typically, the digestive system works better, but also, as you said, fatigue, obesity, uh, brain fog, mood problems like anxiety and depression, allergies, pain, and everything down to autism. Now, if, GMO, <clears throat> if GMOs are actually contributing to these diseases, and Americans eat more than their weight in GMOs each year, then we would expect to see a rise in many diseases related to the correlating to the increased use of GMOs. And that's exactly what we're seeing. These correlational graphs, and there's more than 30 of them, do not prove that GMOs or the Roundup herbicide sprayed on them cause things like gluten sensitivity, insomnia, hormonal problems, et cetera. But given all of the other evidence, and given the fact that the lab animals, when they're exposed to GMOs and Roundup, exhibit other conditions that are related to these health problems, we are now believing that GMOs and the Roundup sprayed on them are a major contributor to the deteriorating health of the United States population. And Jeffrey, can you speak to uh, health effects when it comes to people consuming GMOs? Well, you know, when you look at the animal feeding studies, as we did in this article published in the International Journal of Human Nutrition and, Public and, and Functional Medicine, you see indicators of problems with the liver and the kidneys. Now, what's the cause of it? Now, GMOs are largely sprayed with Roundup. They're called Roundup-ready seeds, and they're sprayed with Roundup herbicide once they grow and sprout in the field. Roundup, it turns out, at concentrations that are tiny, 437,000 times smaller than the amount allowed by the Environmental Protection Agency and it consumed per day. At that level, per body weight, rats developed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It, they also developed kidney conditions, pituitary conditions. They also died earlier, and they also had multiple massive tumors. That's just from the Roundup. But the rats that ate the Roundup-ready corn also had multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. In the article, we looked at what is possibly causing this problem, and it appears that there's contributions from the process of genetic engineering, which creates side effects, as well as the Roundup that is sprayed on them, and in some cases, it may be the toxic insecticide produced in genetically modified corn. Well, and Jeffrey, as you pointed out earlier, obviously those uh, people who you collected data from who were able to switch their diets saw huge improvements in their health. I want us to now turn to uh, you and Amy Hart. You've put together a film called Secret Ingredients. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. These are, these, uh, this documentary, which will be released soon, features families that switched to organic food and noticed a dramatic change and improvement in their health. One family, for example, had 21 chronic conditions between the five members of the family. Their son was autistic and unable to speak. The mother was paralyzed. She became a food expert, experimenting on the family, taking out gluten, taking out commercial dairy, taking out soy. When she finally learned about GMOs and the Roundup sprayed on them, she, she switched the family to organic and all of the conditions disappeared. The son is no longer autistic. That's just one of the families mentioned. There's also a chiropractic clinic where 92 out of 92 formerly infertile couples 
now have children. And they were not only given chiropractic care, but everyone was switched to 100% organic diet. So we believe that the rise of infertility in the United States, perhaps the rise of autism, many of these disorders are linked to the food we eat. Now, we talk about organic. You said earlier about switching to non-GMO. I'm going to take it up a notch because Roundup herbicide, which we know is probably one of the perpetrators of these problems, is not just sprayed on Roundup-ready genetically modified crops. It's also sprayed on wheat, barley, rye, oats, potatoes, sweet potatoes, sugarcane, etc. So these are non-GMO crops, so the Roundup is in our food supply big time. Therefore, instead of just avoiding the GMOs, switch to organic, which doesn't allow GMOs or the use of Roundup, and when you do so, Take notes. Take a look at the energy level, at your mood, behavior. Write down all the symptoms and, and, and rate them from 1 to 10 and see how they may change. If based on what we saw in the movie Secret Ingredients, which is available, you can see the, the trailer at secretingredientsmovie.com, or in the article about the survey, which is, a result, which is found at non-GMOsimproveHealth.com, we would expect that a large percentage of the people who try this will notice a very significant change, and some of them, it will be life-changing. Jeffrey, it sounds like Secret Ingredients is a, a documentary that a lot of people will be able to relate to. We're a little short on time here. Can you quickly tell us what you and Amy are hoping the average viewer will take away from your film? We've already tested it on some audiences, and virtually everyone have, has increased their commitment to organic food. Whether they're already largely organic, they decide, okay, we have to be fully organic. And if people have never been organic, they decide they're going to try it. And this is something that's easy to do for most people, depending on where you live. And you can even order organic food in the mail. But trying it, it turns out, has positive benefits, not just in health, but also financially. In the movie Secret Ingredients, we have families that no longer go to doctors between their annual physicals for their family. And one family that we interviewed for the movie that didn't make it into the movie, but I'll give you the plot spoiler anyway, their, their financial outlay for, for health costs dropped by half the first year and then another half the second year. They made thousands of dollars of savings. And so it made, they made far more money in savings than they spent on organic food. Wow, powerful stuff. Thank you so much for your insight, Jeffrey, and for coming on to our show. That's Jeffrey Smith, founder of the Institute for Responsible Technology in San Francisco. Thank you so much. Thank you.